What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here, welcoming you to part one of a brand new Total Warhammer 3 Let's Play. Can you hear the excitement in my voice? It's finally here and I'm all kinds of excited about it. I finally managed to Slaneshi giggle my way to an actual Slaneshi campaign. Not to worry, though Nakari will be the first of the Let's Plays, uh, as chosen by Pole, a Chaos Undivided, aka Demon Prince campaign, aka Build a Demon Prince Workshop campaign, will be dropping probably a few hours after this one is posted. Uh, they both got a lot of votes in the poll, and I figured, hey, why not both? A uh, couple of quick things before we start. I do note that I have purposely avoided spoiling myself, uh, particularly with regards to this faction, so pardon the learning curve as I familiarize myself with all the new stuff. I like learning the game and the units and making mistakes of the first time, as I tend to think of it as part of the experience. Plus, the mistakes tend to result in some really fun situations as I screw myself over, so, you know, there's that. Uh, second, don't forget to drop your likes and comments if you enjoy the content and want to see it uploaded faster and more often, as that is entirely determined by engagement and the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you haven't already purchased the game and would like to support a smaller channel like mine, I do have an affiliate link in the description below. Third, this is a first episode, and if you think there's any wonky, like, sound issues, it's too loud, too quiet, or maybe, I don't know, frame rate issues that might require some graphical adjustments, do let me know, and I will adjust that as well. Well, finally, huge shout out to you guys for all the comments and support. As I always say, I do YouTube for fun in my time off, and your comments keep it fun and keep the channel alive. Alrighty, here we go. I'm going to start with a quick Lord overview, give this a read, uh, but if you want to skip some stuff like the reading and the cinematics and whatnot, there will be a bunch of timestamps in the comments below as well. Uh, the Demon known as Nikari, is a notorious keeper of secrets. As the Arch Tempter, he scours the immortal and mortal realms to experience the ultimate sensation and taste ecstasy in its purest form. Honestly, sounds like a pretty good time. Uh, over recent millennia, he has developed a particular hatred for the elven twins of Ulthuan. Whatever his short-term goals, the next part of Nakari's plan will surely involve their eternal misery. Alrighty, faction effects, diplomatic relations, plus 20 with all factions. Uh, honestly, this seems like a silly... Uh a silly buff for a Chaos faction to have it all, but hey, fair enough. It does make sense for uh, Slanish in particular uh, from a lore perspective. Although, uh, <laughs> yeah, still, still the idea. Kind of funny. Anyway, tribute from vassals plus 50%. I guess this is based on a unique mechanic that the Slaneshi factions have, wherein they can confederate uh, other factions via their influence, which I guess we will get into and how exactly it works in the game itself. Uh, the Lord effects. Experience gained plus 50% each time a new faction is fought in battle. Makes sense. I just talked about, you know, getting new sensations and all that, as Slaneshi like to do, so uh, that does work. Seduce units cost minus 25% related to uh, seducing units to join your side for a battle and enemy leadership minus four local region. Now this is kind of a meh buff to be perfectly honest. Uh, generally I find in uh, Very Hard Very Hard, which is what I do for campaigns, uh, the leadership buffs that the AI gets are so hefty uh, that uh, even stacking a bunch of leadership debuffs is really pretty negligible. I remember in Warhammer 2 getting Skaven Slaves on the enemy side with more than a hundred leadership and it's a freaking Skaven Slave and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I doubt that this is going to matter all that much, but hey, it's, uh, you know, better than nothing. Anyway, very hard, very hard is what we're going with, and I believe that's it, so let's get it going. The Chaos God of Desire, Slanish, is the youngest of the Dark Powers, but has the potential to eclipse them all. He is the Dark Prince and Lord of Excess. His servants embody those traits to perfection, and none more so than Nakari, the Arch Tempter. His search for the exquisite saw him stranded on the wrong side of the Maelstrom. Not that the Keeper of Secrets would be concerned, for beings such as Nakari will always find distractions. Nevertheless, I can perhaps offer a greater prize to tempt the Arch Tempter. I may make my way through perfumed fog, ignoring the tormented screams to his palace. The negotiations will be challenging. It was in the palace of ruin I found Nakari, the keeper of secrets. His den of excess was no place for mortals. With every step, it whispered promises of all I desire. Like others before me, my soul yearned to be ensnared. 
But I knew if I succumbed here, he would own me for eternity. I made my revelations quickly before my senses gave way. Yet Nakari found the tale of Belakor and Urson tiresome. It was a secret he kept already. As my mind clouded, I made a final gambit. I would guide him through the maelstrom to the bear's deathbed. The bear is tempting. The sorrow of a dying god, yours to treasure. A treasure to cherish. I want it. You will give it to me. One drop of Urson's blood. That is my fee. Advise me well, and you will have your desire. Fail me, and I will have your soul. Our task is to reap the sorrow of a dying god. Urson's anguish collected and treasured for eternity. Lead me to the dying god, or it is your sorrow I shall savor. At once, Arch Tempter. It seems the great game continues, and Korn makes his next move against your master, for he despises the Dark Prince most of all. Servants of the Blood God surround your capital. You must act quickly, regain the Shardlands from the Crimson Skulls. Their pain will give you meager sustenance, but it is a necessary step to reach riper fruits. Further south lies sweeter prey. Mortals who worship the ruinous powers inflict upon them pleasure or pain, as is your want. Should you cross the Kraken Sea and reach Norska, you will find many mortals to tempt and usurp. However, there is a risk in extending far south. Exposing your flank to the predations of Scarbrand, Korn's mightiest bloodthirster. The Eternal Lagoon forms a barrier that will keep him at bay for now. But it is only a matter of time before your armies clash. There is much to do, Bejeweled One. You require a large fiefdom to sustain the divine hosts required to penetrate the realm of chaos. Let us commence. Penetrate, you say? Alrighty, how they play. Seducers of Slanesh, a devotee. Slanesh armies can capture devotees from battles and from chaos cults, and among other sources. A devotees are mainly used to create chaos cults, to raise disciple armies, and for pleasurable acts. Uh, elaborate. <laughs> and refuses to elaborate further. Uh, the followers of Slanish are infamous for the yeah, thanks. Uh, infamous for their debauchery. Okay. Uh, gifts of Slanish. Slanish lords and heroes can impart gifts of Slanish on enemy characters by defeating them in battle or through hero actions. Gifts of Slanish impose negative effects on those that receive them. Oh, isn't that fun? Uh, seduction. Prior to battle, Slanish armies may seduce one or more enemy units into switching sides for the battle duration. Slanish exerts a seductive influence over elvish and human factions. By increasing seductive influence, uh, the forces of Slanish may eventually be able to forcibly vassalize a target faction. Okay, so we can va forcibly vassalize uh, elvish and human factions, presumably? Interesting. Uh, influence of our amoral men, elves, and beastmen as well. Okay. Wait, how do we vassal? Okay, well, we'll see what that exactly does. Uh, the Great Game. Slaneshi factions participate in the Great Game, vying with the other followers of Chaos to spread the most corruption all over. Yeah, 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 all right. All right, engage the enemy. First things first, the Blood God has always hated Slanish above his other kin. His servants approach the Palace of Ruin. Now is the time to strike. All right, it looks like the game is certainly setting us up to be fighting a corn a lot early on with, uh, with it uh, talking about Scarbrand and all that stuff. But uh, anyway, let's see what we got in our army. First of all, we got some fiends of Slanish. Uh, we got Hell Striders. Okay, okay, at least we have one ca cav unit. Uh, we have 
health layers. Okay, so health layer chariots, sweet. Uh, Marauders of Slanesh, very uh, expendable unit, I suppose. One of the things about the Slaneshi roster is that they basically have no armor, like very, very little armor. I think 40 armor is the most units they, uh, most armor they have, uh, other than the, uh, uh, what the hell's it called? The Defiler. What's the what's the fantasy version of the Defiler called? Uh, soul Grinders. Other than Soul Grinders, yeah. <laughs> Uh, those guys are heavily armored, but everybody else not much. Anyway, we got demon nets to flank and attack the enemy. Mara uh, more marauders of Slanesh with hell scourges, uh, scourges rather, hell flares. Yeah, okay, we know what we got here now. Uh, let's uh, let's take it into a battle. Oh man, he's only got four units. That's a little bit disappointing, but let's uh, let's fight him anyway. Alrighty, now this battle I guess is going to be too easy to bother with uh, making it a cinematic battle, but not to worry, there will be plenty of cinematic battles uh, throughout this. Uh, campaign probably throughout this episode as well Ooh, what do we have here fascination cause damage to combat in the strong versus 25 men unit or above and causes rampage okay interesting go all righty i'm really excited to take a look at the uh, uh, various units And as I've said before i will be reading uh, well anything that's uh, remotely lore related Alrighty. Alright, we will take a look at the... Well, you know what? We might as well take a look at some of these units right now. I have not uh, seen all of the units. Alright, so the uh, the chariots look pretty damn cool. Yeah, if that uh, if that runs over you, you're going to be in a pretty bad way. And this is our fiend unit, which are our monstrous infantry unit. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I like the whole cavorting thing uh, that they do spinning around. Uh, we also have the Hell Striders. Yeah, these guys, as I recall, are fairly effective at what they do. And now oh, they got poison attacks as well. Isn't that nice? Uh, that certainly should help out. And same with the uh, uh, with the health flares. So we got two poison units. Okay. And wait, what do you apply? Soporific Musk. Ooh, nice debuffs. All right. Guess you could. Combine some Slanish and Nurgle stuff uh, by virtue of the poison. And there are the uh, Hell Scourges with their whips, uh, Defender and Meat Shield. Same with the uh, regular uh, Meat Shield Marauders, and then a uh, Nikari itself. Oh, I like the I like the white glowing eyes there. <laughs> they look like LEDs though. <laughs> Uh, alrighty, alrighty, let's get to this, uh, do this quick battle, and then we'll get, uh, we'll get to trying to find some much better battles. Alrighty, uh, you go here, you go here, you can, oh, you can Vanguard deploy, Monstrous Infantry go as part of this. Now, you guys have 36 million defense, which is not too bad, it's actually quite a bit better than the, uh, Marauders, and... And Demonettes, you actually have 36 melee defense as well, but I'd rather not lose you, not that it's likely to happen. Over here, start deployment, and let's get to it. Let's slow it down a little bit when we're up close, just to watch some of the animations. Alright, ooh, Nakari, you run pretty damn fast. What do you got in terms of speed? Oh, 100 speed? Damn, you're fast. Okay, you're gonna be useful for chasing stuff down. Uh, like lords and stuff. Also, what do we have here? A, uh, a Lash of Sanish, Breath Acquiescence, Melee Defense, minus 24. Also quite nice. And you have uh, spells that slow enemy speeds on top of the fact that you run incredibly fast yourself. Our Marauders do move fairly slowly, so we do have to wait for everybody to catch up. All right, chariots. I'm quite interested to see how chariots will behave in the uh, in the third game. They were very odd in the second game and required so much uh, imbalancing and all that stuff. Uh, all right, you guys get this. Uh, you guys hit this. We don't have any. There we go. We don't have any guard mode auto. Uh, you. Are you guys not gonna attack? What are you doing? Do something. Come on, do something. There you go. Uh, Alrighty, hit this, all those poor blood letters. Uh, you want to debuff this uh, Herald of Corn? Ooh, I want to see any of the dual animations over here. Wait, you're fighting blood letters? No, 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 no. Fight this Herald. Herald, get back here. Get back here and fight. Fight like a Herald. Uh, you guys, did I not tell you to charge? My bad. Uh, demon Nets are charging as well. See, this is what happens when I get distracted by animations. I'm getting used to a lot of me getting distracted by animations. Not like this first battle matters at all, since it's impossible to lose. All right, where's Nakari? There we go, there we go. You chasing the right uh, lord now, right? Yeah. There we go. Ooh, that was a pretty cool uh, spinning little flying attack. Uh, demonettes are flying in to help out. Demonettes 
Very nice, very nice. So you guys are, they've, they've already basically melted. Okay, yeah, and the, uh, the Herald of Corn is also melting as well. Damn, the Herald of Corn is tiny. The curry is absolutely gigantic. I am going to very much enjoy all these animations. Well, that's about it. Oh, they have a Chaos Warhammer unit. Ah, whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, we will uh, deal with that as we go in battle. Let's try to find a proper battle where we actually have to try. <laughs> uh, I, I do wish that they would uh, they would give first battles a little bit like like I know that it's supposed to like ease you into the campaign and the units that you've been uh, uh, saddled with, but you know, but a little bit uh, tougher ones. Let's see, we could go for devotion. Well, we don't really need the healing. Uh, do we need six hundred money right now? You know, just take the devotees. I think. Although the money would probably be helpful. Fortunately, Slaneshi corruption increases income, so that's all great. Oh, wow. A uh, hundred money. Hey, and we got an Alluris as well. I believe you guys act as assassins. Uh, well, let me just see. Total favor plus 375, devotees plus 50 for what? Send a hero to join your army? I think we can manage that one. Uh, willing supplicants recruit two new units? I think we can manage that one as well. And once again, guys, do tell me uh, if the... Uh, uh, if the volume of the game is uh, good, can you hear the game and all that? Because uh, generally speaking on these first episodes, that stuff does need to be adjusted periodically. Uh, yeah, so you have training, assassinate and assault units, assault garrison. Yeah, about as I figured. Ooh, which mount will we use you on? You have a secret chariot and exalted secret chariot. You have a secret chariot and an exalted secret chariot? So basically this is a wasted point. Hmm, okay. Uh, at least in at least in uh, single player, anyway. Uh, you have milk. Oh, your shadows. Damn, I was hoping you would be a Slaneshi caster. Although to be fair, Nikari has access to the uh, uh, to the Slaneshi stuff, so it doesn't really matter. Now, I guess we are going to go for. Hmm. You know what? Go for inspiring presence first. Usually in the second game, I recall going for a uh, root marcher first with a ten percent, but now it's only five percent. I guess they nerfed it. Or was that an SFO that was 10%? I no longer remember. Anyway, you, join the army, please. And then we hit the Palace of Princes. That should be a lot more interesting. In terms of uh, cities being a little bit weird. This location has special importance that Zinch. Okay, well, we're not Zinch, unfortunately. Or perhaps fortunately, depending on how you look at it. Uh, let's see. You want to recruit a couple more units? I guess we'll probably need plenty of these Marauder units. Uh... Ah, we have Marauders with Spears as well. Yeah, you know what? Definitely go for the Marauders with Spears to hold the line, or as opposed to the regular Marauders. Honestly, you should have started with those, Nakari. You're not trying hard enough. Uh, also, let us increase our... Ooh, we can get our Chaos Furies and Hail Striders really quick if we want. It does tempt me, it does tempt me, but... Our growth should be... Wait, what the heck? Dark Bastion Province Capital Dimensional Breach. Provides garrison and adds walls. Income generated can be converted into a portal, can be converted into a bastion. Oh, so we can choose between these things. Interesting, growth and defensive supplies and income generated is the same. Central corruption adjacent provinces increases. This is construction cost reduction for infrastructure buildings. Hmm. Construction costs for military buildings. Okay, fair enough. Uh, anyway, I guess what we want is either growth or money or ideally both. Grandiose... Uh, wait, favored income. What's the name of this chain? Favored income. Okay. Uh, favored income is probably what we're going to go with. Income for building, all buildings plus 20% right away. Yeah, let's do that. And I guess we'll upgrade this so we can get the uh, hell scourges immediately. I mean, do we even need that? It's only 900. Go for it. Yeah, go for it. We also get to start with some tech. Oh man, getting into a new... Oh, definitely growth first of all. And then construction cost reduction for all build... Oh. Oh damn, that's a hard choice. Well, I guess we gotta go for growth first as we can't reduce buildings when we can't build said buildings, right? Huh, melee defense plus four when fighting against coronate factions and leadership. Uh, that's pretty interesting, probably something we should get early on since we will be fighting a lot of coronate uh, units early on. Okay, but uh, I'm gonna go for the growth first and then we'll deal with the other stuff later. You are already recruiting and I believe we can skip unholy manifestations, call upon Sinish to rain havoc upon targeted individuals. Paying for pleasure. All units in this army will instantly take 6% damage. That's quite weak. Uh, but I guess it uh, gets stronger via various methods. Okay, fair enough. Total amount of Sinesh corruption across the entire world. Aha. 
Well, I'm not, oh, it unlocks the different ones. Okay, okay. Uh, tech... I believe that's everything. Now, what are the objectives here? Uh, victory conditions. So complete the corn realm so when the portals opens up, we can go steal Demon Prince Souls. Uh, and then fight, fight the final battle. And domination campaign. Oh, so pretty simple in terms of the uh, victory conditions. I guess it is like a vortex campaign uh, in that sense, in that it has a very uh, uh, distinct uh, victory type. Alrighty. Uh, recruit two un new units. Easily done. Prince returns, capture and occupy the following settlement, Palace of Princes. I think we can get the Palace of Princes right now. Alright, now what kind of units will we have here? Alrighty, there we go. Now we got enough units, I think, to make this one a cinematic battle. Uh, just in order to uh, watch the animations, if nothing else. It does say Valiant Defeat, but in my experience with the early access of the game, as the, uh, the auto-resolve is fairly wonky, and uh, you do need to... Uh, uh, you do need to remember that. It always makes you fight battles, essentially. But anyway, here we go. Alrighty, here we go, our first Slaneshi cinematic battle, and you never forget your first. Uh, so here we go. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited. Oh, damn, those towers can shoot a lot of uh, shots at the same time. Damn. The heck? This little wooden tower has, like, huh, what, what, what is it shooting? Is it, is it cannon fire? Is it, uh, is it gonna do splash damage to us is what I'm concerned? No, it says piercing tower. Uh, it does have, uh, it doesn't say anything about splash damage, so hopefully not. Uh, hopefully it can't uh, hit more than one unit at a time. Looks like Nakari might have taken a hit or no, kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it looks like he got a little bit of damage on him. Uh, anyway, we're gonna charge in. Oh, they're gonna counter charge us with some of those. Oh yeah, look at that animation. <laughs> <laughs> I promised you guys I'd be getting distracted, and damn it if I do. Ooh. Yeah, okay, let's just watch this glorious. Oh, the Nakari, why are you going off screen? What are you doing? Oh, was that some sort of like charge looking attack? Or was that a. Huh. Pretty awesome. I just want to see Nakari, all of Nakari's animations right now, especially because this battle is going to be, by the looks of it, fairly trivial. Huh, looks like four units there with a single hit. Very nice. All the spinning around craziness is pretty good. Ooh, and our chariots come in once again. These things are so damn cool. Look at them just run over the enemy units. It looks like these things either have uh, a crazy amount of mass or hidden stat that allows them to move through units a lot, or maybe chariots are a little bit different in uh, Total Warhammer 3. I gotta, I gotta admit, though, Nakari's cape looks a little bit weird. And, ooh, <laughs> that lash onto the enemy uh, corn uh, warriors right before jumping in. All right, let's check on uh, in, in how much damage we've taken. None, we've taken zero damage so far whatsoever, okay. And here come the chariots once again. Yeah, it does seem like they get through the unit every time. What's our melee defense? That's only 26, but yeah, I'm, I'm really liking the health players so far. They only have five kills, perhaps, but they've been breaking enemy formations like absolutely crazy, and they haven't been getting stuck and trapped. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about this tower right now. We are trying to keep get, gonna try to capture a uh, a capture point up here, but it is fairly far away, and the rest of our units are still down there. Oh, it looks like Nakari's taking a little bit of a beating now. Uh, to be fair, I did send Nakari in to do a lot of damage, but, you know, in the name of watching the animations... Oh yeah, look at those harpies draw from the sky. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. All this chaos gloriousness. Right up my alley. Alrighty, I do believe that corn unit is now going to rout, and they're terrified as well. Oh wow, imagine being a warrior of corn and being terrified. Wouldn't corn just like instantly explode your skull for just for running away out of fear and terror? <laughs> that doesn't seem right. I feel like perhaps corn warriors should be immune to psychology. Keep 
cannon's still firing down on us, and Nakari's surrounded again, probably gonna take a little bit more damage. Oh, that's a cast animation. Another one of these lashes. Oh, damn, the camera went up on these rocks, unfortunately, before I could uh, get a nice look at it. But that's okay, there will be plenty more cinematic battles where this one came from. The purpose of this one, considering the triviality of it, is uh, primarily, once again, to enjoy these animations. Once again, damn, Nakari is huge. Also, Slameshi Giggle. I uh, gotta say that at least once for every time I make that comment. Anyway, our Health Layer Chariots are now going to move around, not to capture this, but rather to hit this unit of blood letters in the back, as Nakari is not, or has not been, I suppose, over here until all those units on the other side routed. <laughs> and Nakari's also really good at breaking through the enemy formation. Alrighty, and here come our chariots. Gotta watch that charge as well. Where are you, chariots? It's the best angle for this charge. So, maybe? Yeah, there we go. The charge actually looked reasonably slow. Ooh. We watched some demon nets fight uh, blood letters. Should have a showdown. Demon net versus blood letter versus plague bearer versus, I suppose, pink horror? Or would, it be, or would it be a blue horror as the uh, basic trip? Ah, uh, some blue horror. But yeah. Alrighty, well, that looks like the vast majority of all the enemy units were quickly obliterated by Nakari. Really? Oh, and it looks like the enemy lord is unstable and army losses are going to cause them to just outright die. Yeah, easy battle. I'm just going to speed up through the rest of this as there is not much else to say except possibly Nakari charging somebody one more time. And there we are. Enemy dead, seducers of Sanish, I don't know what you're talking about in terms of Pyrrhic victory. Perhaps we took a little bit of damage on some of our units from the continuous cannon fire. And uh, yeah, it took us a little bit too long to capture stuff. Should have tried to capture it a little bit earlier to stop those cannons. But, uh, you know, I was just enjoying the Kari way too much. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see how we did, I guess. Alrighty, not too bad. You see what I mean about the auto resolve being a wonky, saying that this would be a valiant defeat when obviously it would, uh, uh, it was a really unlikely to be anything of the sort, uh, especially even with us using a completely brain dead strategy and not even bothering uh, to do anything flanking, just quickly moving in, not capturing any zones, and a single blob, and not even attacking multiple parts of the enemy, uh, uh, of the enemy settlement. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let's see, experience, money, free trickster shard, always a nice find. And uh, yeah, I probably could have gotten Nakari out of there earlier, but Nakari's animations are so damn good, I was uh, I was just enjoying watching those way too much. Uh, you know, even distracting myself during, uh, uh, during the battle while playing it prior to commentating. Anyway, uh, let's go to Occupy for obvious reasons. There we are, miscast chance, okay, we got that trickster shard, we occupied that palace of princes. So... Once again, it says that the Palace of Princes is important to Sinch. Is it of any kind of importance to us or no? No, it doesn't look like it. I do not see a, uh, uh, a landmark. Oh, well, it's all good. Uh, let's see what we have here. Hey, oh, we got a favorite income thing here. Oh, oh wait, that's this one. Okay, no. Uh, you are going to continue getting favorite income, and I guess we might as well continue getting favorite income everywhere. It's not going to be a crazy amount of growth. and we get at least one of these, uh pure growth buildings, then we just change it up a little bit later on. Eh, I think that's good. Alrighty, Iron Curse Icon, and take the Shard Lands. Maintain control of one province, okay? I think we can manage that. Free Glittering Scale, oh, 500 devotees? Damn. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Uh, what what do we get them from, by the way? Raiding, eluding, and sacking settlements. The higher control and income, the more devotees will join your cause. Uh, so just like the... Uh, uh, the Dark Elves and Slaves they gather, I take it? Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. 
Alrighty, anything else that we actually need to do this turn? Oh, we did level up uh, Nakari. Uh, I have absolutely no idea which units we will be going uh, with Nakari. Probably we'll have to get at least some soul grinders, uh, just by virtue of the fact that uh, uh, they are armored units and they're very difficult to kill. Um, but, let's see. Does Nakari have anything special for any particular type of unit that would uh, help us theme out this army a little bit? Uh, enables soporific musk attacks, uh, so that would make you a great flanker, right? Is that the uh, is that the ability? Uh, Whisper of Glory. No, none of this buffs any specific type of unit. You don't like elves. You don't like corn. Hmm. All righty. Well, we're obviously gonna get a group marcher, and then uh, let's pop into the. Uh, uh, the main tree here, or the main magic tree, anyway. And you have leveled up as well. Ooh, Shadows, which means Pit of Shades. Yes, gotta love Pit of Shades. Oh, and Occam's Mind Razor should work quite well with the uh, with the Slaneshi Coast in particular. So, yeah, nice. Uh, do we want to get training on you? We probably want to get training on you. All right, ooh, what trait do you have, by the way? Cunning. Oh, well, free poison attacks at the very least. Not a great trait, but, eh. Okie dokie, and I guess we also want to keep recruiting units as we will be fighting. Gonna take a few turns to move to the fee, uh, the fetid catacombs, rather. Alrighty. Uh, what do we want to get in here? Do we want to get more demon nets? They are quite expensive, but they also do. Hmm. As long as we have enough Marauders of Slant, you know what, let's get a couple more Demon Nets. Ooh, wow, actually, considering their cost, maybe we hold off on that. Uh, get one more Spear. Yeah, let's, or maybe two more Spears. It will, will be negative, but after taking the Fetid Catacombs, that'll change anyway. Alrighty, let's proceed, I just want to double check, wait, shouldn't the missions appear like on the side here somewhere? Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, hide the world events, so it's just take this one province? Okay. We can do that. Let's go. So freaking excited. <laughs> uh, alrighty, a unit recruited, a Marauders of Slanish, and a bunch of stuff's being built. Ah, there we go. Our income's still positive, although I suppose once we move out of our territory, it will no longer be so. Now, I want you to go right here, since we can't reach the Fetid Catacombs in one turn anyway. Go into Encamp, which will get you to nearly full HP. Uh, summon Disciple Army, cost 300. Do we want a Disciple Army? Wait, what does this immediately send or does it show us the units? I mean, I might as well use this just to see what this does. Oh, it does immediately summon, okay. Okay, I figured that it would uh, uh, it would show us the type of units that it would summon rather than just summoning them. What, did, what do you get here, by the way? Seekers of Slanesh, Seeker Chariots, some very basic units. But hey, quite helpful. Disciple Army has been summoned by Nakari, merging in Palace of Princes, the Shard Lands. The Frenzy Mob will deteriorate over time unless moved to a heavily corrupted area. I take it this is not a heavily corrupted area? Well, it's not heavily corrupted enough. It is heavily corrupted, but it's not heavily Slaneshi corrupted. Wait, can these things. Can these things raid, I wonder? Huh. Artisan of pain. Curious. Can you raid? Suck the land. Yes, you can, but it's not that much. Oh! Ah, oh, damn, you can't quite to reach this. Yeah, if we could we could have only reached it with you. Eh, whatever. Not a big deal. Hmm, I wonder if we could see just no wait, I just realized I just said that we can't reach it. Alright, fine. You just stay right here and then we'll attack with you and Nakari next turn. Plus I guess we can use these units as sacrificial units when we attack, thereby decreasing the amount we take with um, the amount of damage we take on Nakari. Uh, now do we want to get any more units or is it a little bit too risky right now, especially while these things need to grow a little bit. Uh, yeah, all right, fine. Let's get a couple more. You know what? Let's get one Hell Scourge. And if I'm feeling like we have a, way too many of these uh, Marauders of Slanish, considering they're pretty darn weak. Hmm. Now, Hell Scourges versus Spears. The Hell Scourges are defenders, so they can defend for quite a while more. They still have garbage armor, so despite the fact that they have shields, and they are bronze shields at that, uh, they will melt to range fire. Already had one of these guys. Yeah, you know what? Get one more. We'll hold off for now. I don't want to bankrupt us a little early on. Plus, we gotta figure out how we're going to take Blood Mountain over there. Oh, maybe I should have saved the army for Blood Mountain. Alrighty, at the end of your turn, have an income of at least 200. 
Uh, yeah, hopefully. At the start of your turn, have at least 1,000 devotees. Alrighty, so let's save up some devotees and let's recruit some units. Uh, oh, Palace of Ruin, by the way, I just realized that you have a landmark. Court of the Covenant, allegiance points gained, plus 25, diplomatic, plus 25 with Demons of Chaos and Control. Okay. Good enough for me. Uh, so, Nakari. You are going to hit the catacombs. Oh, look, they have a cute little defending army that's in march stance. You are going to then uh, encircle this. Valiant defeat, eh? We're not going to bother seducing any units. And... Wait, can you even seduce enemy demon units? Oh, already. And okay, you can't encamp, but that's okay. You can provide us some nice reinforcements. Well, let's get this. Uh, let's see. Left click to any favor spend. Blah 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 blah. Hmm. Not that I wanted to, anyway. Uh, already. Well, let's get to this. Uh, this one should be a, a little bit more fun. I guess we'll actually have to split our forces up and try a little bit. Alrighty, here we go again. Now, on the one hand, this should, in theory, be considerably tougher uh, than the last battle by virtue of the enemy having twice as many units as we do, uh, or, or as, not as we do, as they did uh, last time we fought one of these uh, little uh, minor settlement battles. However, we do have a lot of things going for us. One, we actually have a reinforcing army that we can use completely sacrificially, and we don't have to worry about dying, because who cares about them? They're going to uh, disintegrate anyway. And and uh, we can freely sacrifice. And the other thing is, the enemy is moving its reinforcements uphill like this, plus they're in march stance. And uh, A, they have to fight uphill, B, they're completely surrounded, and C, they're all going to be dead and the enemy's gonna have to fight without them, so it's not really going to be twice as many troops now, is it? Alrighty, a nice little battle line we've got. Oh, it looks like some of the enemy are actually trying to just charge straight through. Fortunately, our chariots are able to attack and apply some of that uh, uh, damage. Screw up the enemy formations. Oh, wow. It actually looks like it's grinding through those blood letters. This poor Cornade army. I'd like to think of it as the, the sorcerer or uh, or maybe even the uh, Slaneshi demons themselves knew where the Coronate units were coming from via ritual or something like that. Ooh, I like this little, like, little depression area where the units are fighting. Pretty cool. Alright, Demonettes moving in to attack enemies from the back as well, but yeah, this, uh, this force is basically dead already. <laughs> Absolutely overwhelmed. Yeah, probably a bad idea to uh, try to reinforce this location, corn or cornate forces. I feel like we haven't been getting enough demon that animations. Ooh, I like their death animations. A nice kill, nice kill. All right, how are we doing out here? I like everybody's death animations. All the demons really look really cool. Also, I really like how all of our uh, larger units are able to uh, run through everything quite well instead of being completely blocked. It's working quite nicely. Uh, anyway, I believe that's it for the enemy army. There's a few units remaining plus the enemy lore, but Nikari should have absolutely no trouble ripping it apart. But let's check back over here in the meantime. Uh, because we need to essentially form up and head to the enemy settlement. We're going to do the exact same thing and have these guys, in fact, let's just speed it up a little bit while everybody tries to get away from everybody. Yeah, enemy lord wounded. We just want these guys to essentially distract the enemy as long as possible, and they are going to move in while our army moves in. Any second now. I can no, no longer remember exactly when this happened. There we go, finally. <laughs> Obviously, we can just send them in, and as soon as I saw that the tower was firing on us, I thought, you know what, the tower's probably going to dish out so much damage that we might as well uh, try to send everybody in. And getting an attack, or at least stopping these uh, uh, flesh hounds. Or those are Chaos War hounds, rather. Alrighty, while the rest of our army moves in, and yeah, that took a little bit too much damage to our Herald of Slanish, so here come a few more units charging into the enemy. But once again, this is merely a distraction while our main forces uh, move on in. 
at least the car is super quick. Everybody else is a little bit uh, slow, well, not the uh, not the larger units. So let's just keep watching our little distraction. Uh, we also sent in our secret chariots. I did want to hit the enemy units in the back since they were fighting like this, but I also wanted to capture uh, this thing over here, which is why we have several of our fast-moving units back there, as uh, there's uh, several things that we can achieve. And uh, I definitely don't want those towers dishing out damage to us, like the last time we fought one of these. Where are you going, Nakari? What is this? Hey, how's going? What's over there? <laughs> oh, I guess they're, oh, they're just trying to run around, go into the center over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to just capture this. Uh, in the meantime, the enemy, unfortunately, has built a barricade stopping our secret chariots from getting through and them getting slightly trapped by the enemy uh, uh, warhounds as well as furies and uh, some reinforcements coming. Unfortunately, once again, they do have the mass to escape this, although it does look like one fell apart, I think. No, all four got out. Never mind. Ooh, cool little, uh, little chaos symbol, fire skull, whatever, what, what is the, whatever the hell this is. Cool thing. <laughs> whatever it is, it's cool and I like it. Uh, call it a giant torch, I guess. You need to keep the lights on in the place after all. Yeah, because this is, this is clearly just decor. And, and demons generally just love to decorate. I'm not being sarcastic, I'm, I'm genuinely saying demons up to decorate. Alrighty, let's get back to this little uh, distraction area. Our units are still fighting to the death, I certainly hope, or at least that's the, uh, uh, that's the plan of this. How close is the rest of our army to moving in? Ooh, finally, Nakari, you appear to be reaching the enemy forces out here. Gonna get a lash going through. Oh, just slightly clip the uh, the enemy hounds, but not to worry. They're going to get ripped apart anyway. Like so. And our chariots stop in their tracks for a few seconds, but together, I think these hounds are not uh, not really gonna do anything. Oh, they're poisoned as well. Oh, and we have our uh, fiends of Slanish moving around. I keep confusing the fiends of Slanish with the. Uh, uh, where are they? Where are you guys? There you are. Seekers of Slanish. Alrighty, enemy buildings destroyed all over the place due to the fact that we are starting to capture locations. Uh, the enemy warhounds are out of the picture and the enemy blood reaper is pretty badly hurt. Uh, this time we landed our lash pretty damn perfectly on the enemy the unit of uh, Chaos Warriors and they got pretty badly hurt and Nakari once again charges in. Go figure, this is a pretty Nakari animation heavy episode. Been right round, Nakari, and uh, these Chaos Warriors will also be out of the picture pretty soon. Hey, and we got uh, Scipio coming in to help out with all this as well. Probably start using Scipio to lead some de demonettes into uh, into battle, and actually using them to flank. But unfortunately, you have captured an enemy point. Yes, indeed, we have. We have used our uh, our uh, Hell striders to capture this one and I think we I don't remember who I used to capture this but it's not really important we're also using the uh, Seekers of Slanesh to capture this point and look at that four points being captured enemy army is pretty much destroyed our uh, distracting units are all basically dead but you know they achieve what they were supposed to which is preventing the enemy from defending their towers as well as uh, allowing our units to kill them with the greatest of ease oh, well done everybody well done Nakari as always let's see how we did and let's proceed to next. Alrighty, worked about as planned. We were able to capture, I believe, four out of five of the uh, city or town uh, locations at the end there. Our main army basically didn't get harmed, and we were able to, well, I guess, sacrifice our uh, a little reinforcing army that I really don't care about. I just really wanted to see how that ability uh, worked exactly. Had to click it once. Uh, let's see. Oh. You can now see what exactly the veterancy does as opposed to uh, clicking the uh, units. There's a lot of little quality of life things that have been added in this uh, uh, in the third version of the game, and I do really like it. Alrighty, uh, 
Let's occupy you there, fetid catacombs. Uh, catacombs, a gold sigil sword. Yeah, sure. Not that strong, but sure. Uh, and we'll be basically full level. Now, Blood Mountain. Are you the... Hmm... Strategic location, eh? What do we have here? Oh, well, it's probably for corn, yeah. I mean, it's Blood Mountain. It was pretty unlikely to be slant, actually. Uh, let's see, we got a crystalline pool here as well. Some more growth. Alrighty. Well, that should be helpful. Uh, yeah. Let's get you your levels up. In fact, you're leveling quite fast, ain't ya? Uh, what I do want here is definitely to get Blissful Rapture uh, for that extra melee attack and leadership while casting. And just spamming Lash of Slanish is not enough. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Pavane of Slanish. Let's see. Uh, strong versus 25 unit to or more. Then we got Hysterical Frenzy, but causes Rampage. I mean, I suppose if we could pop it on Nakari, it wouldn't be horrible. Plus 40 melee attack, although Nakari has already got some insane stats without being buffed. What else we have here, all by the way? Rating and all that stuff. Eh, maybe we'll be doing some rating. Ooh, 8 for... Hmm, acqui Acquiescence. This is very... Hmm. Wait. We already have access to the spell, do we not? Yeah, and we have it for six. Acquiescence upgraded is... Hmm. Minus 24, so it's already bad. We do not have access to Pavane, and I do want another damaging ability. Uh, and I guess we'll get Hysterical Frenzy as well. I might just skip out on Acquiescence, since we already have a bound, weak version of it. Uh... I guess it's on a longer cooldown. Wait, let's see, cooldown 29 seconds, cooldown 29 seconds, that's about the same. Well, that minus 30 when you get a level 1, right? Yeah. So it will be on a shorter cooldown, but otherwise probably not worth the point. Uh, I'd rather max out one of these things. Possibly Lash as well, but uh, I'd rather get a more damaging spell. we got a Bombardment here, for example, that we could head towards. And I definitely want to start focusing on the magic a little bit. Uh, you, speaking of focusing on magic, let's get to you, Melkos, Mystifying Miasma, and then something useful. Let's get the Enfeebling Foe. I do like the spell. Uh, I do tend to use it a lot, even though the Penumbral Pendulum is also quite good. Ooh. Now, you know what? Let's start with the Penumbral Pendulum, and then we'll go to the Enfeebling Foe. I generally like uh, spammy sort of spells like this. Uh, Enfeebling Foe, Foss Protection, that sort of stuff. The stuff that costs really little. Ooh, and the new Ice uh, Sheet spell for the uh, Lore of Ice. Uh, that only costs, like, two mana. That's pretty awesome, in my opinion. Uh, anyway. Let us, I believe, end the turn then, and now we gotta proceed to Blood Mountain. I would like to be able to take this particular location and uh, have this entire province shored up before calling this first episode, because I feel like it would be a nice, uh... Oh, that lord disappeared. Huh. Wait, do they only last one turn? I gotta read it next time it uh, it says something. Anyway, uh, you, Nakari. Oh, I probably could have actually built you some more units, but you know what? Maybe it's better that I didn't because we can... Oh, hello. What do we have here? Uh, somebody we're at war with and somebody with an actual army. That's not bad. And the only problem is for you, you're in March stance. <laughs> oh, man, but a field battle. I really, I really feel like we should attack this. Who is this, by the way? Velig, you're a little, uh, you're a little Norse contender. No, you're a warrior of chaos. Okay. Oh, and we're already at war with you. That's interesting because you could come up from this location and attack us here at the Palace of Princes, which will not be able to defend itself. Okay, definitely something we got to keep an eye on. Also, the control is in a pretty bad situation as well. Uh, we probably got to get some control buildings. Uh, in fact, what's our control tree here? Uh, what? do we have here? So we have one control and one corruption. Well, the corruption shouldn't really be a problem, I would think. Oh, but the control is also because we're just conquering stuff. You know what? We're gonna attack this. I feel like we probably won't be able to attack Blood Mountain afterwards. Because we'll be too damaged, but we gotta capitalize on the fact that this army is in march stance. And we probably won't have enough time to take both, but I do want to fight this battle. Field battles are always pretty damn glorious. Valiant defeat yet again, you say, and ooh, you have some aspiring champions. I love that unit. Uh, uh, let's get to it. Once again, a cinematic battle. Uh, let's, uh, let's keep on funning, shall we?
Alrighty, a field battle. I am so damn happy about this. Uh, just because I really miss field battles. I feel like we don't get enough. Oh, and yeah, the uh, the spears on these guys. Those are definitely spears. <laughs> uh, and their arm's not bad either. Uh, let's see. Field battle. Yes, I'm very excited about this because I feel like I'm missing field battles a little bit too much because of the minor settlements always being like pseudo settlement battles. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's been uh, it's been trying trying to find one uh, thus far, but uh, hopefully we'll get a little bit more uh, as we go on. Ooh, what do we have here? Forsaken units. Yeah. Cool. I'd love to see a Forsaken versus Demonette matchup, although Forsaken have Frenzy and Demonettes do not. But they, but they do have the uh, they, they do have the devastating flank. Let's see what the stats comparison is: forty and thirty-six versus forty-one and twenty. I think on the face of it, the Demonettes should be better. But the for oh, the Forsaken hit twice as hard. They also have an eighty-five armor. Hmm. They're both tier two. There are more Demonettes though. Whoa. Hmm. More charge. I mean, it's kind of a difficult to properly have a matchup because they're not supposed to charge directly into each other anyway. And the rest of our army still moving forward. Ooh, these aspiring champions. Would love to get some aspiring champions into our uh, units. Oh, I don't remember these uh, these helmets being that glowy. They're pretty damn cool. Oh damn, I want aspiring champions again. <laughs> they're looking pretty damn awesome. Rest of our army is still moving forward. Unfortunately for the enemy, they're all still uh, very tired, and thus uh, they're not going to be in good shape over here. Now. There we go. Slow motion. I do... Oh, man, I gotta... Oh, I gotta rebind the hotkeys. I keep trying to use my... Uh, uh, my Total Warhammer 2 hotkeys, but they're completely different. And... And there we go, Spears charging in. Ooh, I like how the first ones charge forward and the second line leaps. Uh, makes sense to me. Nice, nice. Although the game still feels very weird without blood, but, uh, you know, as soon as it's out, obviously. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's what I've been messing with without the, uh, without the slow motion. Yeah, you're, you're showing off, Nakari. You're showing off. Beautiful. Alrighty, I don't know what Nikari cast there, and I don't care because I was mesmerized, as uh, Nikari probably wanted us to be. Uh, let's see, over here we have our unit of Hellstriders of Sinus, which unfortunately did get caught uh, by the Chaos Warhounds. They are slower than them right now, but that's, I believe, by virtue of the uh, poison. I actually think it's 100 to 95, but you know, obviously, if you mess up for even a second, uh, that happens. Anyway, let's speed it back up to normal. We are sending our units of both Hell Flayers and uh, Beasts of Slan, or Fiends of Slanish, I keep confusing it with Beasts of Nurgle, uh, Fiends of Slanish to help out these Hell Striders so that they don't die. And there we go, here come the Chariots and all of these units uh, love to hit enemies in the uh, sides and flanks as they have that devastating flanker ability and just like that this entire enemy force routes quite easily. Let's check back on the main battle, uh, Nikari still in the uh, center of the enemy formation, just a wrecking face. I did send him originally towards those aspiring champions, but uh, he's sort of running around because, uh, what's it called, you know, he has that ability where he sort of jumps through the line and then goes out, and I decided since he's already out, we can send him towards the enemy lord who is back here uh, somewhere. Yeah, there we go. Enemy, Chaos Lord, yeah, Nakari should be able to take care of him and just fine. Our Demonettes are also charging the enemy in the back, plus we do still have our, uh, uh, our, our hero here. We should still be able to dish out some nice damage. Already, balance of power is now 75% in our favor. A lot of enemy units are starting to route, and there we go. Our uh, fast-moving units are also now in and are ready to charge the enemy in the back, having... Oh, yeah, look at that formation breaking. Once again, very, very impressed with these... Uh, uh, with these Hellfires, they don't, once again, get a crazy amount of kills, but to just that formation disruption seems pretty damn crazy. There you go. Very nice. These guys, however, do get plenty of kills, the Fiends of Slanish, and I guess that's how we want to be using them. I do want a couple more Fiends of Slanish to dish out more damage, as they're pretty damn amazing at flanking, it seems. Go figure, right? 
And Balance of Power is, what, 85% in our favor? Now more and more units are routing. Nicarius almost finished off uh, the enemy lord. No Slaneshi Giggle, unfortunately. Not finished off in a good way, but in a bad way. Looks like you are going to take a couple more hits. Oh, your broken army losses. Tired. The army is done for. I really should not have marched Sandst all the way out here. This was a terrible mistake. Perhaps they saw our army in the distance and they were enticed by it and decided to march stance over here. Let's go with that as our justification. And thus the battle ends once again. I'm really glad we were able to get an actual field battle in our first... Uh, uh, in our first episode here, as otherwise I would have been a little bit disappointed with the lack thereof. Honestly, this should have been the first battle. Like, instead of that four-unit corn battle with barely any units, we should have gotten a bigger army like this uh, to have watched our spectacular units. I am enjoying these animations so much, but uh, yeah, anyway, a decisive victory. Alrighty, there we go. Not too bad at all. Uh, let's see. Devour Captives 8. We could get 808 money or we could get a uh, 74 Captives, eh? Hmm. Money, Captives, Healing. I feel like we probably want to go back to our own territory for one heal right now anyway. Although, hmm, I don't remember how big the garrison is where we're about to be headed. Interesting question. Uh, you know what? Let's devour the captives. I would like to prevent these guys from recruiting too much. Oh, and it's just this one guy here, eh? Huh, that's not too bad. Although, they do have quite a few more forces than I had originally uh, anticipated. I do think that we can probably win that battle. I mean, we could go back and heal up. But anyway, unfortunately, I think I'm going to call this episode here. It's starting to get long, and then at this point, it's going to get so long that uh, it's going to it's gonna take me hours and hours to upload. So, uh, I'm going to call it here. We'll start off next episode by attacking on Blood Mountain and continuing to enjoy our... Uh, our Slaneshi units. Now, I'm thinking I'm going to reduce the amount of cinematic battles soonish, but I want to get a feel for all the uh, all the units and enjoy the animations. But uh, soon enough, these sorts of battles that are reasonably easy will uh, switch to uh, non-cinematic styles. But the ones, well, especially field battles, as they're kind of hard to come by in this particular game, uh, as well as the, uh, uh, obviously, the more difficult slash fun battles, we will enjoy those in cinematic style. At least that, that's the plan for now, you guys. Let me know what you think as uh, your uh uh, suggestions, etc, etc. Next time we take Blood Mountain and then I don't know what objective we'll have after that, but I do imagine we will be going around down here and taking all this stuff, so, yeah, making headway already. Plenty more headway to make. You heard me, Slanashi Giggle. Uh, don't forget to leave a like and comment for your friendly neighborhood heretic. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.